Hello everybody doing our CFL week 9 previews, picks, predictions, whatever you want to call it as usual. And before we start, please make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel and you're interested in the CFL or you're new to the CFL, whatever the case may be, subscribe and we will go on with the video. So, first game of the night will be tonight at 7.30. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers are over in Quebec to play the Montreal Alouettes in a game that could be pretty good you never know i think this game will be a good game possibly and here's why winnipeg has had to battle some injuries they've had to battle a very short period of rest and then are flying over to montreal after having to play calgary just a few days ago which means the alouettes could be in a good spot to upset winnipeg their owner has predicted an upset, kind of like what he did against Argonauts. We'll have to see if this one sticks or if the Owls fall short again. In the end of this, though, I think I am going to pick Winnipeg. They are chugging along. It is insane. They are 8-0. And they still haven't even had their first bye yet. To think that if they win this game tonight, they could lose the rest of the games for their season and still have a 500 record just absolutely blows my mind. And all around, they are a better team. Of course, you know, Geno Lewis, etc. will probably be the names that we focus on here. I think that those are who you'd expect in this for Montreal as they are still missing William Stanback from what I ascertain or understand and that kind of stinks but in general Winnipeg very good. Nick Dimsky's back. Dalton Schoen's been a monster. I don't know if Greg Ellingson's back just yet but Brady Oliveira came off a very good game. So in general, you have to think Winnipeg's defense gets the job done. And of course, Winnipeg's offense getting Dembski back is a big thing there. And I'm very excited to see this game. Curious to see how it'll go, but I am picking the Blue Bombers. So tomorrow night, we have the Calgary Stampeders taking on the Ottawa Red Bikes in our nation's capital. Or I should say CFL Canada's capital. As the Red Bikes picked up their first win of the season this past week against the Toronto Argonauts. And that one was a close one, but, you know, Caleb Evans was able to get that touchdown throw with about seven minutes to go to get that cushion. Ottawa's defense came up clutch. As you saw them pick up the win, Calgary, of course, lost their game against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Really good game there. They played pretty darn well and probably should have had a chance to win that one. They didn't, and now they go on into Ottawa to try to pick up a win and get off the schneid, as they say. Calgary will be down, Kadeem Carey, though, and they will be out of Trey Roberson, Sean McEwen. I think some other guys might be out for them as well. So it's going to be tough, as the Red Blacks are a team that is not going to you know, cut you any slack. Paul Police knows that while he did get a win, he is kind of in the hot seat, whether that be now or by the end of the year, a win against Calgary would put them in a spot to have a winning streak for the first time in quite a while and then of course keep them in the thick of it for that playoff race. I really do think this game could be pretty close at the end of the day though. Peyton Logan will fill in for Kadeem Carey. Liked what I've seen from him so far. Reggie Bagleton etc. on offense. Defense looks good as well. Big Jameer Thurman fan, love to watch him out there at the linebacker spot and love to see how he can shift around in coverage. So I think at the end of the day, you got Bo Levi Mitchell against Caleb Evans. Caleb Evans, very fun player to watch, but I'm going to take the experienced Calgary Stampeders over the, you know, the gritty Ottawa Red Bikes in this one. So I think Calgary will win this, but I would expect this one to be a very close game because of the Stamps losses on the roster. Then Saturday, you have two games. You have the rivalry the Hamilton Tiger Cats heading on over to Toronto to play the Toronto Argonauts probably to make it their second home stadium as they like to call it this game should be a good one as well just because of the history the passion it's Simone Lawrence retweeting some stuff that was kind of taking a dig at Toronto and their fan base and both teams have plenty to play for here in the East. Toronto has the lead in the East. Montreal, or Hamilton, I should say, picked up a win over Montreal to stay alive in the thick of this thing. To beat your rival, that being Hamilton or Toronto, would be big. But to also help your team out in playoff, that would be good as well. I think a big thing here for the Toronto Argonauts and whether or not they're able to be effective and to win this game is to you know, handle this dual quarterback situation. Hamilton has started to use a little bit more and more. You got Chilts, you got Evans. You're going to have to find a way to stop both of them, if not at least one, in order to do well there. And then just kind of do your thing. This team is not a sexy team, but they are a team that has been able to win games the past two years. 
you know that you should have a good chance of winning at home brave the crowd hopefully the drops aren't an issue hopefully Andrew Harris can get going but that will be a big thing here as for the Tiger Cats really if you're able to kind of do what you've done at points in the year and not get outscored in the second half you're going to be in good shape as well played good games at points of the year lost those games I really think the big thing for Hamilton is I don't see Toronto being a team that can get a big comeback rolling, just my opinion. At the end of the day, for this Ontario rivalry, I will be picking the Hamilton Tiger Cats to pick up a win in the six. Before we have our final game of the week, Edmonton taking on BC Lions. Last time we saw these two was week one where the Lions absolutely obliterated the Elks. You had uh, Nathan Rourke play very well. You had Butler have a big game. All around in general, that was a very fun game. Of course, I didn't get to watch it because I was, you know, out of town, you know, kind of rural area, so there was zero bars. I mean, like nothing. Um, but yeah, Nick Arbuckle was the starting quarterback at the time, so it's a little bit different of a look. And we got <laughs> some weird music in the background uh, from my wife. But yeah, it's a little bit weird of a look, and we will have to see as we might get... Trey Ford, probably not. I think he is still injured, but Cornelius will go out there. Try to brave the storm as you take on the BC Lions that have been very good this year. And Edmonton, a team that's been able to win games off comebacks, and turnovers, points off turnovers, I should say. We'll have to see how it goes, but I'm going to be picking the BC Lions. Yes, I think the Lions should be able to take on Edmonton. But the Elks are a team that's played gritty as of late, and I'd expect nothing less from a Chris Jones-led team, and we'll have to see. So, who are your picks for the week? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, please make sure to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are new and want to get into the CFL already in it, and you just want to watch some CFL content. Everybody, stay safe, and you go have a great night.